Oh no! My mending bow! No! I can't believe that just happened! My precious mending bow! So that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly what Prowl wanted to happen. Uh, but uh, unfortunately for him, Blue Jay's a little bit smarter than that. The Birdcage for naughty birds who mess with people's roofs. Now, if you don't know what this is about, I did, I, I did Prowl a service. I cleaned his roof off because it was dirty. It was all green and yucky and crusty and I made it all shiny and bronze like a penny again. I mean, it's been a little while since, uh, since we cleaned this off. I, I guess we could clean it again, right? Let's get out of here before he gets mad. <laughs> okay, we're gone. So this right here, the birdcage, was Prowl's attempt to uh, uh, retaliate against me for cleaning his roof off. Uh, and actually, I blew up one of his roofs with TNT by accident because he blew up one of my, pir my, my he blew up one of my pirates on purpose. The war continues. We gotta clean this mess up, and, and then I log in today, and I find this out. I'm not even impressed, Prowl. I'm not even impressed. Look at this. You ready? We go into the pirate ship. You're gonna have to try much harder if, uh, if you're gonna get the old Blue Jay. Release the Kraken! V very s slowly. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with this thing. I haven't decided. Enjoy the new aquarium! It's a perfect, uh, a perfect use of your fishing hut. I even supplied the fish for you. There you go. Guys, we've got a ton of progress done on the stream uh, that I'm on right now live. Like, good gracious, this thing looks so different now that it's got all the blackstone and basalt and deep slates all mixed in there. Now, don't get me wrong, we are nowhere close to being done with this. We've got all of this side over here. We got the back side. We got to cover up the dripstone farm. We got to work out the back cave, get rid of the rails. We got all sorts of stuff left to do, but we are making bits and pieces of this thing uh, finished as we can go about it. But you know what? I'm just, I'm so excited about this. I cannot wait. I cannot wait any longer. Uh, you might see a torch there. There's a couple torches up there. Uh, there's a few parts of the volcano that look a little bit unnatural because we've actually pathed a few things out here. We're going to head up here and we're going to get our first lava fall. We got actually two of them going. So here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. We'll drop some lava here and we'll drop some lava here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm on fire. Why am I always on fire? Let's actually break that torch and then we'll toss that one right there and then we'll take a quick step back and you'll see uh, that this is actually looking really, really cool so far. And this one is actually going to fall down and kind of fill in this side area, but then this one's not going to go any farther over this direction. It's got a nice flow. It disperses quite a bit at the bottom, but it stays pretty thin at the top. Really, 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 really love this. All right. So then the next thing that we're going to do while that's finishing up this other torch, we're actually going to go up here and we're going to act like a, a little bit of lava has burst through the side of the volcano as well, because, you know, that can happen. So we're going to we're going to break that torch and then really quickly, because, you know, we're going to get burned. Uh, we're going to toss one here. We're going to toss one there. And then we're going to go. Ouch. We're on fire again. Ow, 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 ow. And then we've pathed this area out as well. So it will never intersect or interfere with the original lava fall, which is just about done. Let's go ahead and back up and take a look and see what we've got. <laughs> oh, that's looking so good. Oh, I'm so happy. Blue Jay's happy. Happy bird. We are over here at the bridge that leads to nowhere, except for kind of the lava farm back here. And we're gonna fix that today. We're going to put in an entrance right here that leads into our super smelter room. And just like that, with the magic of editing, we've got a tunnel all dug out. And I actually really like the way this turned out. This is not decorated yet. So keep in mind, it's not going to stay like this. But I absolutely love that this tunnel uh, kind of pokes out the side of the mountain. And then it weaves down here like this. And then it kind of comes out the side of the mountain again. So we can see our pirate ship and our hilltop village and our creeper farm and our fish farm. We can see everything from here, which is really fun. And then it weaves on back down in to the furnace room. So you're probably gonna say in the comment section, uh, why are we doing a hidden door if all we gotta do is, you know, get our elytra and fly in right here and we've got access to the base. Well, you know, I really didn't think that through before we started digging. I didn't realize it was gonna come out the side of the mountain. It just kinda happened and it looks cool. So we're gonna keep it. And honestly, maybe at some point we'll put another door right here, make it look like it just leads to a dead end. And then you push a button 
and then it goes on into our furnace room. So we might have a couple of these piston doors hidden throughout the base, but we're gonna start with the top up here. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piston and we're gonna put it right here. And that is a sticky piston actually. And then we're gonna put another one right next to it. And then we're gonna put another one right here in a little bit of an L shape. Then we're gonna mirror this on the opposite side, just like so. Then temporarily, because this is a dirt uh, hillside, it's got some stone here. I'm not exactly sure how this is gonna get decorated yet, but for now, we're gonna put dirt blocks right there, just like that. And then we'll build this up one more so that our doorway is too high. And now that I think about it, I think I'm gonna push this back just a little bit further into the side of the mountain because I don't want any of the redstone popping out the front and we don't have a ton of room to terraform with. So I'm gonna push this back and then we'll keep going. I'm only gonna show you how to do one side of this for now because it will be mirrored exactly the same way on the opposite side. So let's get rolling with it. We'll go ahead and place two blocks right here. Those can be any two solid blocks of your choice. They do have to be solid though. And then we'll put a redstone dust here and a redstone dust there so that when these blocks become powered, this block will power that piston to push it forward. This redstone dust will power that piston to push it forward. And this redstone dust will power this block and that block to push those both forward forward. And just a quick demonstration with a redstone torch. All four sticky pistons have pushed their respective blocks forward, the two blocks here and the two sticky pistons there, uh, effectively closing off this side of the door. Now, we actually want this to push forward as well, so we need a way for these two sticky pistons to extend their block forward. We'll get to that here in just a minute. And as always, we will make sure to explain how this all works when it's wired up. Don't worry, don't worry, we'll explain it all. So then we'll come back here and grab a repeater and we'll toss it down right there and we'll set it to three ticks. And then I'm gonna put a piece of black stone here, just another one of our infrastructure blocks. And then right next to it, we'll place one piece of glass. This will be important here in just a few minutes. We will have to dig down, but let's actually go up first. We'll go right next to this one and place another piece of glass. And then we'll just kind of start stair-stepping this up until we are kind of catty-cornered and one block above the sticky pistons right here. Then we're gonna take another piece of glass and place it down right here. And then we can also go here and here, and then one piece of black stone. What we're gonna do from here is take a redstone dust line and run it all the way up to the top until it hits that black stone right there. So now if we take our redstone torch and power this right here, you'll see that not only have we pushed these pistons to the side, this back sticky piston has been extended forward because this block right here is technically powered, which powers the piston by default. If we break this, it will retract and go back to its normal state. This right here is why it is so important to have a repeater set to three ticks because when we power this thing, we actually want this to be slightly delayed from this one right here so that when the door goes to open, these pistons retract first and then these pistons retract second. If these pistons retract first, then it's not actually gonna grab this block because it's still technically gonna be forward and it's just going to retract the piston and leave the block in place. So now, we actually have to go down underneath the contraption just a little bit because we need a way for this piston to extend and push that block forward as well. So we're just gonna dig right here a little bit. Nothing too crazy. We'll place another piece of glass right here. And because of the way that glass works, redstone does go through the corners of glass and we can go ahead and place one redstone dust right there and the line will continue on down here. And then we do need to be careful with how we set this up. We don't want to accidentally power this piston with the line below, we only want to power this one. So how we're going to accomplish that is by going right here and going one, two, three, and then we will weave over, we'll go one here, and then we'll just replace these for good measure. And this will eventually get replaced with our permanent path, but this will serve as the powered block that will actually close the door. So we'll grab a repeater and place it down right there. We'll make sure to leave this on one tick, and then we can go one, two, three, and four so that this redstone dust is running directly into that block. And let's go on back up top here, and we'll give it a quick test. If we drop our torch down, bada bing, bada boom, both of our pistons have now pushed forward, and this is effectively blocking the entrance. And if we retract it, it'll go ahead and open up, and it'll close, and it'll open up, and it'll close. We actually want to line this area right here with blocks that would kind of blend in. Just for an example, really quick. If we block it off like this, and let's pretend this has gone all the way up to the mountainside, uh, we have no idea that there's an entrance here. 
if we've got a button hidden somewhere that will activate this redstone torch, we can open up a hidden entrance, walk through, and then it can close behind us. That's the end goal. Now we've got a couple more things that we gotta do before that's possible. So let's dig this stuff back out and we'll keep going. Quick demonstration here. Both sides are now linked up. If we go right here, it will open that side. And if we go right here, it will open the other side or close rather, because this is the closed position. So now you see the problem here, right? We can't afford to be going over here and going boop and over here and going boop to power this every time we want to open and close the door. We need some sort of a system that will unify this to where we can press one button, push one lever, whatever we want to get the whole thing to react when we want it to. So here's how we're gonna do that. We're gonna grab a piece of dirt and we're gonna leave a one block gap in between this piston right here and this block right there. And this is going to be our trigger point. And then out of the side of this block facing this direction, we're gonna have a repeater set to one tick. And then we're gonna go redstone dust, redstone dust. And then we'll do a comparator here. We'll dig this out just a little bit more just to give ourselves some room and then redstone dust, redstone dust and a comparator right here. And now I see that poses a bit of a problem. I don't think we had this issue in my testing world. Okay, this is a super simple fix. All we gotta do is take this right here, we'll break that, and we'll just shift it over one. After all, only one of these two blocks needs to be powered by the repeater, so it's better to power this back one uh, to leave room for our little pulse extender here. So here's what this is gonna do. We can actually activate this several different ways. We could use a lever, which would put this in a permanent state of being on, or off, depending on where the lever is, or we could use a button so that when we press the button, that lights up, and then when the button pops back up, this will shut off. Now, you'll notice that this actually stays on a little bit longer after the button press. This is very important. If we just have a button press, this is going to open and close very quickly and maybe not allow us time to get through the doorway. So this little pulse extender will allow the door to stay open just a little bit longer so that we can get through, and then it will close behind us. After all, this is a secret entrance, so we don't really want it to stay open after we've gone through it, and this is the best way to do that. Then from here, all we need to do is get the redstone tied to this button uh, linked up to the middle section up here to power the entire door all at once. We have a redstone line that runs up this little stair step right here. And if we press the button, you can see that it doesn't actually interact with any of this redstone. It is its own separate line and the door is not quite affected. Now, the reason for this is because we actually want this to be in a state of being closed by default. So in order to do that, we need to go here and place a redstone torch right here on the opposite side of this block so that when this redstone powers this block it will shut off that torch but for now it will remain on and we'll run it all the way over here until we get to this block and because this is actually going to run out of signal strength before it can power the sticky pistons fully we need to extend this signal with a repeater but we will leave it set to one tick and now the entire door should be closed by default so that when we press this button it opens up, not sure why that didn't work correctly. And now I'm sure, there we go, three ticks. We'll go ahead and press it again. And bada bing, bada boom, our entire door opens up all at once and then closes back up automatically. So when we press the button, we can run on through and the door will close behind us as if nobody was ever there. Now we're kind of trapped in here and I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do about that just yet. I thought about maybe putting a second set of piston doors here uh, so that we could activate them and both would open up at the same time. Uh, but that'll be something I do off camera because this is basically done. And whatever we end up deciding to do, I will show you and demonstrate off camera. But before we get into that, let me actually explain how this contraption works because we haven't done that yet. So here we go from the top. What happens when you press this button? It it will send a full signal strength into this pulse extender so that whenever this button is pressed and it pops back up, this actually has a few extra seconds of power, even though that button is no longer powering the actual block and contraption. So this pulse extender goes up to this redstone line and inverts this signal so that this will get shut off. And when this gets shut off, the signal gets depowered in one of two directions. If we don't break the redstone, that is. Both sides are exactly the same, so we really only need to explain one side. So once this gets powered off, the redstone signal travels down here, and the first line that gets shut off is actually this right here, going into these sticky pistons right here. So this line and this line depower first, because that repeater and that repeater are set to one tick. 
And then on the third tick, this redstone line will actually depower these blocks and then retract these four sticky pistons right here, pulling everything wide open. It all happens very quickly. And it, I know it looks a little bit crazy, but it's actually really, really simple. So if you've had a hard time following the build or you don't quite understand it, even after the explanation, be sure to leave me a comment in the comment section or join my discord. I would be happy to explain it further to you there. And we've got plenty of people in the chats that are amazing about that as well. So now all we really need to do is go over here and just kind of blend it in with the rest of the terrain and make it look like it's in the side of a mountain and you won't even know there's a door here. And now it appears as if nothing has ever been changed with the side of this mountain. Oh, it's so cool. So if we go over here and we uh, we press this button, boom, there's our door. We can walk on inside into our base and it, it shuts right behind us. I absolutely love this. We do need to figure out a way out. I mean, temporarily, we can just fly out of here. If we get some rockets, that, those are not rockets. That will not take us anywhere. There we go. If we fly on out of here, we're able to access the outside again. But we do want to have a way to get back out just in case we want to go across our bridge and go back to our town. Or if we want to come out here and go to our lava farm. So I'm going to be hooking up another piston door, I believe, on this side, and we'll make it all work together. It'll be the same circuitry. We won't need to go over it again. But again, if you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments or on Discord. Okay, here we go. Here's the big tour. We go ahead and press the button and boom, there we go. We've got a nice black stone hallway that is temporary. We are going to decorate it at some point, but now we've got another side to the piston door uh, contraption that closes us off on this side. So if anybody happens to wander in here, uh, they won't actually find the entrance. They'll just kind of find this area right here. And what we can do at some point, we're not going to do this today, but we can put another other one maybe like right down here just so if anybody happens to fly in here it just looks like a cave that's been dug out of the side of the mountain and it doesn't lead anywhere one thing I wanted to note as well is that we did increase the size of the pulse extender uh, and we did that by adding a couple more comparators, one on each side, and we added this block right here. This does extend the signal uh, even more than just putting redstone dust right here. So we did put a block right there and that will keep the signal going just a little bit longer. We did the same thing over on that side and everything is hooked up. It meets up in the middle here and activates off of the same switch. This redstone torch right here gets depowered regardless of which side you press the button on. So it keeps it nice and simple and streamlined. And we can go in here and we can press the button. We can open the door. We can leisurely walk out and still have time to watch it shut behind us. And that my friends is how you build the perfect hidden piston door. Hey, thank you guys so much for watching today. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the entire Bedrock Guide playlist for more content just like this.